is it with Muslims with microphones, man? Can't even get the microphone right. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fi. Wa da'imu salawati wa atimu taslimi ala nabiyyihi sharif wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi Muhammad. Kama sallayta wa kama barakta ala alihi Ibrahima fi al-alameen innaka habinun majid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. So welcome to the late night show. So inshallah I'm here just to briefly give a short talk. I guess the topic has been upon the importance of prayer, of salah. And I was reading this evening actually uh, from one of my favorite ulama is uh, Abu Hamad al-Ghazali who uh, just known as al-Ghazali one of the great thinkers in our religion probably actually one of the most intelligent human beings that ever lived and despite having only lived about 50 years produced uh, an incredible legacy of work Imam al-Ghazali uh, his probably most famous Jazakallah his probably most famous work is the Ihya Ulum al Din, but was actually for many years a, a faqih and an usuli. And actually, his work, Al Mustasfa, is still one of the major, major enduring works of usul al fiqh. Um, I know that's probably boring and it doesn't really interest anybody but myself, but I thought I would just put that out there. Um, but Imam al Ghazali. In his Ihya Ulum al Din, in one of his kutub, one of his books that he talks about, Kitab al Salah, in the book of Salah, in the book of prayer, he outlines four notable qualities of prayer to think and to consider. And he said, For in the Salah, Aymar al Din, wa Aysam al Yaqeen, wa Ra's al Qurabati, wa Gurrat al Ta'at. And we'll talk about what those mean. So the first he says, فَإِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ That verily salah or truthfully salah is عِمَادُ din. And the عِمَاد, anybody speak a little bit of Arabic here? What's an عِمَاد? Afwan? A base? Okay, a base. A pillar? A foundation. It can mean those things. What I like, I'm a visual thinker, so I have a background in, you know, photography and a few other things. So I like to think visually. So the Arabs used to also use the word imed because you know the Bedou lifestyle. The Arabs would travel around in the desert and they would pitch a tent, and when they would pitch a tent, the pole that they would use to erect the tent was an imed. It was a pole, right? And the important thing about the tent, right? The tent is just essentially a big piece of cloth. It doesn't have any form and it doesn't have any function until you rise it up off of the ground. Once you get the, the tent to unfold and you place the middle imad in the middle, the middle pole in the middle, suddenly this simple piece of cloth becomes a bait. It becomes like a little house, a little home. It becomes a place of habitation. So it is that support, but it is something that makes something that is uninhabitable, habitable. What I mean? So salah is that which it makes allati ja'ala dunya makan lil hay. Right? It makes a place able to live in. So when we establish the salah, كَقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى وَعَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ فِي فِي مَكَانَتْ كَثِيرًا فِي الْقُرْآنِ Allah says وَعَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ many times in the Quran. Establish prayer. I want you to visualize with me. 
that in the establishment of prayer, you are not only obeying one of the awamr, one of the commands of Allah Ta'ala in the Qur'an, but you are actually going to make your life livable in this place. It is the means of making al-hayat dunya humane, of making it dignified, of making it doable. With all of the ups and downs, if you erect the pole, you make the uninhabitable aspect of the world and all of its distractions, all of its hardships, all of its troubles, you make it a habitation. And if anybody has spent any time with the Bedu, right, their tent is like it's a really lovely place to hang out. You know, you know shurr al shai, you drink some tea, you know, they have some itar, they have, you know, the beautiful thing, they have like a, a minimalistic lifestyle that's, you know, in some ways very attractive, particularly for those of us that live today in this, you know, modern, complicated, you know, society. But they, they live, they, they stop their, you know, it's a means of stopping your wandering, putting down a tent pole, making your life habitable, and it's, it's a way of rooting yourself in the world. So they, the Bedu travel around all the time, and when they want to have roots for a moment, they put their tent down, they put the imad, the pole up, right? And that's what makes, that's what gives you life. So it's amazing from the isharat or some of the insights that Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah, you know, may Allah have mercy on him, that left us to consider as one, salah is a means of making the world a place of habitation. Wa'isam al yaqeen right? So, Isam, what is an Isam? Yani, I'atisam. It's kind of like I'atisam, but Isam. What's an Isam? Ain Saad Arif Mim. I thought some people spoke Arabic here. It's an it's a unusual word. So, an Isam. Not unlike i'atisam, right? The word is also used, i'atisam is used in the Quran. And in fact, the book Al-I'atisam is one of the most famous works by Imam al shatibi uh, Again, if anybody's trying to win Islamic jeopardy, write these things down. Um, Imam al shatibi one of the great thinkers also in the religion, who wrote a work on bid'a, and we all know what the B word is, bid'a, innovation. And it's an amazing work, and he called it Al-I'atisam. The means, you know, وَعَتَصِيمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ وَلَا you know, you know, وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا جَمْعِيًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Grab onto the rope of Allah all together وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And don't deviate. This is, you know, an عَصَم an, I'm sorry, an عِصَام And an عِصَام is like essentially a leather strap that you use to tie something down. But Imam al-Ghazali says here, it is عِصَام yaqeen. What's yaqeen? Anybody? Certainty, certitude. So salah is the means of tying you to certitude. Many of us flop around 11 months of the year, not sure what we believe in, not sure what state our hearts are in, not sure what state our minds are in, not completely sure whether we believe this is bid'a or this is not a bid'a, but you know, I heard it from Sheikh YouTube that this might be a bid'a, right? I'm not really 100% what I'm sure, but in this one month of Ramadan, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to iron out all the wrinkles until we realize we have a lot of laundry. So in this idea that again, salah is that which is going to tie you to certainty. What's being emphasized here, because salah is what? what if, if, again, visualize with me. What is salah? Put on your visual thinking cap. What is salah? It's praising Allah. I mean, we do say alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. But again, think with your visual cap. What is salah? You guys are... Never going to make it on Islamic Jeopardy. It's a connection. It's action. It's a collection of sayings and movements done in a certain order. It's an action. What I'm trying to get at here, even though we're all pontificating, and if nobody knows what that word is, you can look it up. 
I like to pontificate a lot. I'm a pontificating kind of guy. Right? Tafakkur. Right? Thinking. Right? You are not going to think your way to Jannah. Thinking is important. Allah says, أَفَلَا تَتَذَكَّرُونَ أَفَلَا تَتَذَكَّرُونَ Will you not remember? Will you not reflect? Will you not think? But, Allah says, وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ when you think when Allah says establish prayer, do you think he's saying establish some very complicated postulates about the celestial realm? No. It's saying do. Do. Action. So salah is action. It is faith in action. It is belief in action. It is taking everything that you hold to be firmly true in the depths of your soul and putting it into action on a rug. It is acting upon what you know to be right. It is acting upon what you know to be what is due. It is a right of what is due. Because it is Allah's haqq that we worship Him, haqqa tuqatihi, in the way that He decides to be worshipped. This is why nobody can think of any way to worship Allah other than the way that He has prescribed through the risala, through the message of the Messenger, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Nobody can come and make up some other alternative way to worship God. We would call that a... All right, you made it to the first round of Islamic Jeopardy. Bid'ah, right? It would be an innovation. None of us can make this stuff up, right? So we have to follow. You know, as I said in the khutbah today, Allah says what? قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّنَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ Allah says, O oh Muhammad, say to them, if you love God, follow me, meaning the messenger, يُحْبِبُكُمُ Allah. And if you do that, God will love you. If you want the love of God in your life, don't attempt to make it up on your own. Follow what is prescribed through the life of Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. So in Aymah, I mean Aysam, it is a strap. It's what's going to tie you to certainty. Meaning, certainty is rooted in action. Certainty about that there is no nothing to worship except for Allah. Certainty of the phrase, La ilaha illallah. Certainty of Muhammad Rasulullah alayhi salawat salam. Certainty of that is not an intellectual endeavor. The mind is used, but it's used as an apparatus. It's not the final destination, right? So Allah, Allah is essentially telling us through all these things that Imam al-Ghazali is pointing out that yaqeen is being tied to salah, which is in itself is an act. We get too much of this, you know, we, we feel that we can think our way to Jannah. And we love to do all this thinking, and trust me, I, I, I do a lot of thinking. I think so, too much sometimes. And sometimes you got to put your brain, like put your brain down for a minute and act with your heart. Because the heart is what Allah will judge. Right? Allah asks you to use your mind in the Quran, but in those ayat where Allah talks about qada and hukam, about the judgments He's going to make, He doesn't tend to talk about judging people's minds, He judges their hearts. So put your heart into action and tie it to certainty. If you want to have a greater level of certitude about what you believe, you're not going to arrive there through any single intellectual endeavor. It will only be achieved through divine action. Meaning action that the divine, that Allah, Al-Hay, Al-Qayyum, Al-Quddus, has prescribed. So we have that Salah is the tent pole that makes life livable, and habitable and we have also that salah is the means of tying us to secure belief in Allah Imam Al-Ghazali continues by saying the third point is what? Ra'sul Qurabat it is now what is Ra's? double jeopardy what is Ra's? head yeah it can mean Right, it can mean head, but it can mean something else in Arabic. What? 
Well, it can mean, yeah, hot top, but it can mean something else. So our Jewish cousins have a holiday that in Arabic we call what? Rasusana. Right? In the Jewish calendar, they have Rosh Hashanah. Because Hebrew and Arabic, both Semitic languages, we call this what? Rasusana. It is the beginning of the year. So Ra's doesn't only mean head or top, it means a beginning. So in this, Imam al-Ghazali points out that Salah is also Ra's al -qurabat. What is Qurabat? So Qareeb means to what? Draw close, right? Try to get close to God. Qurabat are the actions that we do to try to draw closer to Allah. And Imam al-Ghazali says, فَإِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ رَأْسُ الْقُرَبَاتِ That in that idea, prayer is the beginning of the acts of which you draw closer to Allah. Not the middle, not the end. رَأْسُ الْقُرَبَاتِ So salah is elemental, elemental to the psychology and to the lifestyle of the muwahidun of the people that claim la ilaha illallah wahda salah is, is central to this so if you want to draw closer to God again you don't have to go and concoct up some theory you can simply do the salah as was prescribed upon the anbiya and the tajul anbiya is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam so salah is the tent pole which makes life worth living, that makes life able to be lived with dignity, that makes this world from a, I mean, it's still a sijin, right? It's still a prison, but, you know, anybody that's been inside a prison, you know, you can, you, you can make it livable, you know? It doesn't all have to be just iron bars and concrete. You can make it livable. We've all seen Orange is the New Black. We've all seen Oz. Right? You can make it livable. It is also the thing that ties us to having certitude about the haq, about the truth of la ilaha illallah. And salah is the beginning to obedience and the beginning to drawing close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fourth point, and then we'll do Q&A. He says that salah is gurratu ta'at. Now this word, gurra, I want to, I love this word, I love the Arabic language, it's an amazing language. A gurra, anybody, anybody, you're probably more fami familiar with garra, but a gurra with uh, dhamma. What's a gurra? Ghayn ra mutashaddid ta'un marbuta. Gurra, gurra. Ghain mad Ghain madmum Ra Yeah, but what is that? It's not just the start, but so I'm gonna hand out some Kamuses, some dictionaries when we're done here. So the word Gurra and so here's the thing, Imam Al Ghazali. It's funny because actually, does anybody know his nationality? Does anybody here know Imam Al, Al Ghazali's nationality? Persian, Persian. But he was a master, master of the Arabic language. Matter of fact, the Rijal of right, the great giants of the Arabic language, ironically, tend to be Persians, right? Siboe is considered the greatest grammarian of the Arabic language, and he's Persian. So anyway, Imam al-Ghazali is very flowery in his language, but to an effect. So he says that salah, prayer, is gurratu ta'at. And it sounds like somebody upstairs is having a really fascinating conversation. I'm just curious. If, it's, you, if you want to, share it with us. Or are you trying to decide what gurra means? 
Were you having like a committee meeting? The Gora, Majmu'a al Gora. Um, so, I won't leave you hanging on a cliff any longer. Gora, so the Arabs had a word that they would describe certain types of horses, some camels, but mostly horses, that had remarkable beauty. Because the Arabs had like this really sophisticated standard. And when I say Arabs, I'm not talking about Musta Arab. I hope I don't offend anybody, but sorry, Bilal al-Sham. Right? I'm talking about the Adnani and Qahtani Arabs, right? The Arabs in the desert, the Bedou, right? They had this very sophisticated classification system for animals that, that were in the desert, like horses, camels, and so on. Uh, and the word Gurra is one word that used to describe a horse that had remarkable beauty because it had a white patch on its face. Again, the Arabs, the Bedouin, would describe a horse that had remarkable beauty because it had a white patch on its face, and they called this white patch a gurra. Ghain, gurra. They called this white patch. Now, how does Allah talk about people who obey His command, wa aqimu salah, that, that establish prayer? How will they come to Him on the day of judgment? Say it again loud. What is that? Their foreheads will be what? Shining white. Shining white. Right? وَجُوهُوِ يَوْمَ عِذِي مُصْفِرًا ضَاحِكَةٌ مُسْتَمَشِرًا On that day, those that come, their faces will be shining and they will laugh and be joyous. In Surah Abasa. Right? Performing the prayer, doing the wudu. We know what, when you make wudu, it's what on your body? Nur, light. So those the people that do wudu will come on the day of judgment, how? Shining. So salah is gurratu ta'at. It is the shiningness of ta'at, of obedience. Salah is the means of which you achieve a shining, a illuminating aspect of yourself through the obedience to Allah. Because salah is one of the primary means of demonstrating obedience to Allah. And Allah loves obedience and Allah requires obedience. Right? Allah loves obedience and Allah requires obedience. Again, meaning you can't make it up on your own. So if you want to have that beauty, I'm not talking about like, so this little thing, right, sometimes in Arabic we call this a masjid, right? This is masjid, and then with fatha, masjid, meaning the result of prostration. But what he's saying here is something even more, right? A gurra is like a mark of excellence. When you say that that horse has a gurra, it means it's a, it's a superior breed. It's beauty as of a superior mark. So when you are performing the salah, you are in the mode of superior obedience to Allah. These things collected together, right? Salah is what? Making life a habitable location by erecting a pillar that makes the rest of it livable. It is the means of tying us to having certitude, to belief in Allah. It is the beginning of drawing close to Allah. And then the fourth point, Rahimahullah al-Ghazali says, is that it is the beautification mark of obedience to Allah. If anybody is curious to take a look at these, again, you know, please see me. I'll happily you know, email or text you. I have the notes here in a little list, or maybe in the morning uh, I can put them up on the website if you want to review them again. But my final ending point is don't make this an intellectual endeavor. If you read all of this or you listen to all of this, if it has any benefit, 
you will pray more. That is the rubric to judge, right? If you go to a qiyam, if you go to a talk, and the guy is up there running and he's dry in the mouth about whatever the topic is, if the topic is salah, if you don't leave doing salah better with either more focus, more often, more heartfelt, then some, there's some kind of disconnect. And, and it's not always the speaker, right? The onus is on the student to do the homework and to get the most out of the lesson. Sometimes we have this weird thing in the community now, since we have these celebrity imams, and you know, one of them is a very dear and near friend of mine, so I'm not making any attack on anybody. And actually he and I have these conversations because we're concerned about the state of the community that people are looking to, to, to move from epiphany to epiphany, from, from you know, convention to convention. You can't live like this. It's not Islam. It's not going to sustain your iman. That's why you will not. That's not tying you down to certainty, right? The the second step Imam Al Ghazali is talking about here. And as I said in the khutbah today, instead of looking to the sky, always looking for some great epiphany, just look to the sky itself because it is one of the most repeated signs of Allah's existence and signs that He gave for us to believe in Him. So instead of always looking for fireworks in the sky, just look at the sky itself. That is one of the greatest reminders of La ilaha illallah. And because of that then, Muhammad Rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So inshallah, remember these four points. If you have questions, inshallah, uh, I can put them up for your review. But again, do your homework and hold yourself accountable. Istafdi qalbak, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said. Right? Ask your heart. So whatever lecture you attend, hold yourself accountable, you know, a week later and say, you know, did that have any benefit? Did that increase me in anything? If it didn't, then not only, yes, it's possible, maybe the person speaking didn't have something, but if somebody's talking about the messenger and they're talking about the book of Allah, there's got to be some benefit in there. You need to probably just sharpen your study skills. So do your due diligence, inshallah. Um, I don't know who's going to conduct this Q&A format here. Um, where did Nadim run off to? Um, so how, how, how does this, are we passing around a microphone or are we just, whatever? So does, does, are there any questions? We'll start with the side over here. Yes. So this is the f this is the part that's the favor. No, no, no. I, I just, I'm just trying to get to the the qalb, the root of the. <laughs> yeah. المعنى صحة بس 
ضعف في السند You know, actually, if you try that, it might work. I, I don't. That was pretty good. I would probably be quiet. <laughs> Just see if you can remember that particular form. You know, it's like Tai Chi. The the form is very important. So I have a couple things that was very long. Alhamdulillah. فَذَكَرَ إِنَّ فَتَعِذِّكْرَ Right? So keep reminding because inshallah there's a benefit in the reminder. And I say that, and I've said this before, that there's two groups of people that come to the masjid. They're the people that, that come here because they want to be close to Allah. And then there's the people that come here that don't perhaps realize how close they need to be to Allah. The first group their mujahada, their struggle, is to hold their tongues against those people and let them grow in their iman and in their Islam. That's your challenge, is to not make them feel unwelcome. The challenge on the second group is not to drive the first group crazy. But we are all ummatun wasata, right? We're all one middle group. So we want to hopefully educate these people to respect the sanctity of the masjid. But we also recognize that some of the, ha some of the Sahabi were like Abu Bakr and some of the Sahabi got whipped for drinking wine. But they all loved Allah and His Messenger. So, hopefully nobody is upstairs drinking wine, so I figure it's not that bad, right? You know, we could be a lot worse. Um, so, the, you know, the, the struggle is, and I will, inshallah, you know, make my reminder. I've been making it. Ironically, somebody the other day complained that my khatira was about reminding people to be quiet. So, you can't win in this town. Um, that was... That little joke was for me. Um, <laughs> but we, you know, again, you are, mashallah, in the first group. You get it. I get it. The fact that they're here, they get some of it. And that's good because I don't want them to ever go away. If it takes them, I'm 42 years old. If I live another 42 years, it ain't going to be pretty like the first 42. If I live another 42 years and on my last day, one of them learns to shut up through the whole khutbah, and amut sa'idan. I'll die a happy man. May Allah accept from all of us. Any other question? Question? Yes. Just raise your voice really good. The four points. So Imam al-Ghazali says, فَإِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ عِمَادُ الدِّينَ It is the, the tent pole that erects the tent for the deen. And now in, incidentally, right, it's the, it's the tent pole that supports the tent. But the tent here Allah, you know, that Imam al-Ghazali is talking about is the deen. Now what is deen? What do we call deen in, in, in this Well, okay, now you're really trying to win Islamic jeopardy, right? Yes, way of life, right? We call it religion, way of life. But, you know, the word deen is related to the word dine. Dine, which means debt. So salah is the pillar that supports the tent, that you make life livable through prayer, that supports you to give back the debt that you owed the moment that Allah said, kun fayakun. Be and you were, 
as soon as you materialized, you owed everything to Allah. What supports you in giving back that debt is salah. That's the first one. The second one is, he uh, calls Isam al yaqeen or it's the, the strap or the, the tether that ties you to certainty. The third is Ra'sul Qurabat, the beginning of the acts that draw you closer to Allah. And the fourth one uh, was, um, God, I had to look up my notes. It was Gurratu uh, Ta'at, right? It's the beautification, right? The, the beautification aspect of being obedient to Allah. Gaining, a, gaining beautification through obedience to, to Allah. Those are the four points. Now, you, it probably would help if you like came forward because there's no way we're going to hear you all the way back there. Yeah, it, it, it's true. I mean, the only reason why I'm, I'm doing this is because Imam al-Ghazali is purposely using this word knowing how the Bedouins used it. So... Yeah, no, it can, it can be. It's just it can also mean the beginning of something too. So what he's emphasizing here, because this is a book of ta'abud, of devotion, that he's trying to essentially teach people how to draw closer. It is, un, it is undoubtedly. Salah is one of the chiefly kingly means of, it's like one of the, 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 the crown of ibadah. But it's also the beginning because as soon as a person becomes Muslim, what is far upon them? Prayer, salah. So it's also the beginning. So it's for these reasons, he's emphasizing it as a beginning. Undoubtedly, it has that aspect as well. But because this is a book of devotion that he's talking about, and because of the far nature of the salah, that it is a beginning. So he's just, you're, you're right. He's just emphasizing it from a different point of view for us to, to consider. Any other questions? Any here, over, anywhere? I'm done. Going once. Going twice. So, bay'ah. So, make dua for this ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, for the tawfiq of this ummah, for the success of this ummah, for the Muslims to turn back to Islam. Make dua that the Muslims will desire Islam again that the Muslims will have love for this deen, and they will have muhabba, they will have true love for their messenger, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah put this love for the messenger of Allah in our hearts and in our actions, and may there be no difference between what we love in our hearts and what we act upon. May Allah make us the people of action, Amin wa jazakum wa lahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.